13 verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. And in, in the back, y'all could if you get it in the Amplified, get it ready from here. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Okay? And it reads, examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. Let me get that on the Amplified up there. There we go. Verse 5. So that Jesus Christ in you are counted. Let's go with verse 5. Is that verse 5? I think that. Oh, the beginning. There you go. Examine and test and evaluate your own selves to see whether you are holding to your faith and showing the proper fruits of it. You gotta have some fruit. Test and prove yourself, not Christ. Do you not yourselves, do you not yourselves realize and know thoroughly by an ever increasing experience that Jesus Christ is in you unless you are counterfeit, disapproved? on trial and reject it. It's possible to be think that you are in faith and not be in faith. Very possible. Doc just completed a, a series on faith on Wednesday nights. And I call it the faith clinic. You know, when we have a doctor and we have a clinic and whatnot. And so uh, the, the past six months or so, we've been, uh, my family and I, we've been uh, going through different trials and whatnot. And what I found at some points in those trials and tribulations, that I wasn't in faith. Can y'all believe that? Okay, y'all still smile at me now. <laughs> y'all can talk to me. I wasn't in faith. So, you know, I, like when you get a, uh, if you see a doctor, well usually before you see a doctor, you know, they have someone come in and take your vital signs, all right? And so that's me today, I'm gonna give you all your vital signs and whatnot. So today we're gonna do a faith checkup. Amen? Amen. Y'all sure sound excited about that. Okay, <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna roll with it anyway. So I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you what the Lord gave me to check my faith, make sure I was in the faith. Okay, you told me to examine yourself. Yeah. So, and I'm going to give you the things that you need to examine yourself. You know, at a certain point, when you go in there for the vital signs, they put that little, little uh, blood pressure cup on you, and they check your blood pressure, and then they stick a little thermometer in your mouth, they check your temperature and whatnot. So I got some tools I'm going to give for you to check to see if you're in the faith or not, and, then, and to continue, all right? Because my assignment today is to help you identify and overcome some subtle barriers to faith. The subtle stuff, the quiet stuff, or the stuff that kind of creep up on you and before you know it, you out there. You know, some things that I experienced here in the last six months. Now we know, uh, at least for us, you know, the, the few months before we gave our first fruit, we started experiencing challenges. And I knew what that was all about. You know, try to get me off the of first fruit, you know. You know, and then after the first fruit, we experienced some challenges. And I knew what that was all about. Try to get me off my receiving. You know, I knew what it was all about. So, and, 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 and challenges at another level than we've ever experienced before. And I know what that's all about. It's, it's going to be a great year for us. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we got to have that proper perspective. But nonetheless, I still found myself from time to time slipping out of faith and not really realizing I'm not in faith at all. Or, or I'm operating or having barriers to my faith that just stops right there. Subtle stuff. The big stuff is easy. Now, either you're going to do it or you ain't. <laughs> the big stuff, you know, you know like sowing and, and tithing. And, and you know that. You know if you're tithing or if you're not. That's right. Okay, I mean, you know if you're giving or you're not. You know that. You, know, you don't have to imagine. Oh, did I give? No, you know. You know. You know you give. You know. So, but it's that little stuff, the little small foxes that spoil that vine there. You know that 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 Jesus commanded that we do. All right. So my, I'm going to illuminate some of those things. Just a few of them. I'm, not, I'm going to be with you about 40 minutes. You know, 
just a few, maybe three or four things, you know. I had a whole list of things, you know, and I was like, not cut, I know, because you know, usually I'm long when I have to wrestle with time and whatnot. Like, now I'm talking too much. I need to get in the Word, you know, but <laughs> getting to the Word, Mr. Free. Well, I'm trying to loosen y'all up, though. I still feel y'all kind of tight. So, you know. <laughs> no, I should have had a joke, huh? Yeah, no, I'm not going to tell the joke. Okay. So, a couple of points we're going to talk about as far as you to help you examine yourself and, and to make sure you overcome some barriers. And the first one is, uh, is Jesus your Lord or is he just your helper? Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6 and amplify. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. Is Jesus your Lord or he's just your helper? You know, because there's a, well, let me read the scripture first. It said, yet for us there is only one God. Everybody say, one God. The Father who is the source of all things and from whom we have life and one Lord. Everybody say one Lord. one Lord. Jesus Christ through and by whom we are all things and through and by whom we ourselves exist. Okay, that's, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 6 and that's the Amplify. Okay, there's a, I heard Doc talk a little bit about it on um, um, one of his uh, sermons that I heard on the mp3 there's a, 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 a intellectualism that's creeping into the church what well, has creeped into the church all right and it's based off the the philosophies and the humanism and the, and the wisdom of man okay and it's and is, is anchored in this thing called humanism yes. okay and humanism although it sounds good it sounds right come on brother it's demonically encroached. Yeah. Okay. So humanism says this. Basically before you are uh, 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 ethnicity, before you are uh, 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 gender, before you are your, your whatever economic status, that you are human. Before you are spirit, you are human. Okay, and so what it does is literally it places man above God. All right, and, and in fact, some some places I've read was said man is self God. Okay, and it, it, there's some deception, there's some truth, and there's some deception in there. Uh, and, and here's why: because it denies Jesus as Lord. Okay, and so what a fruit out of it is this thing we call the self-help gospel. Okay? Self-help gospel. Meaning this, I'm in pain or I, I need something or I, I'm, I need to change or I need to better my life. Then I go to the biblical principles and apply them into my life and I get better. I improve. I become wealthy. I, I even heard, I think it was on, on your tape, that non-Christians practice tithing because they know the the, the principle works. Yeah. Care less about Jesus. But they know the principle works. Yeah. No, that almost angered me. What's that scripture of the, uh, uh, the children of the world are wiser in their things than the children of light? That almost angered me. Yeah, but it's a principle. It works. The, the principles in the Bible, if you apply them, they'll work. That's right. You can get healed. You can get your marriage, uh, uh, finances, everything. All right. and, and God wants you to have that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking that part. The part that this self-help gospel does is it strips Jesus as Lord. Yes, it strips his dominion. Okay? And, and also, ultimately, it strips the church of the supernatural. Okay? We, we're supposed to be seeing eyes open up in here. Dead, ra raising up, raising up the dead. We duke the spirit of death. It ain't time for my child to die. And he rises up. You see, that's supposed to happen in the church. And it's happening in more, time, in, more in the third world countries than it is in the, in the United States. All right? And, and, and this self-help gospel is one of the big cause of the philosophies and, 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 and enticing speech. You know? And, and, and God had to actually check me. I mentioned it at the first service because you know, I go out into the community and I speak at different places and whatnot and, uh, in, a, in, a, in a trainer or a motivational speaker aspect. All right? But I am a preacher. Yeah. 
Okay? And, and Jesus is Lord. Yeah. All right? And so everything, th things that I do, I tithe not, so, not just so I can receive money or receive uh, a harvest. I tithe because the Bible, Jesus said, right. you ought to tithe. That's right. Okay? I treat my neighbor right. Not just so I could, could, could tap into the law of attraction. Have stuff. No, I treat my neighbor right because Jesus said, love your neighbor. Yeah. All right, so Jesus is Lord. Your enthusiasm is overwhelming me. Everybody shout, say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. So I don't care if you're operating in faith or not. The first thing you have got to settle is Jesus is Lord. Absolutely. And so the totality of the scripture, you have to obey it. Self-help gospel, they say, well, you know, I need help in my marriage, so I apply the principles in Ephesians 5, you know, to improve the marriage, amen. And then when the time to tithe come up, oh, I don't want to do that. You know, I'm doing fine on the job. I don't need to, I need to tithe. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the self-help gospel empowers. Remember, humanism, I'm man. I empower myself to do what I want to do. All right? So, got, you got got to get it in, in, ingrained into us that Jesus is Lord. Everybody shout again, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, number two. All right, about that, did I tell y'all start taking notes? Okay, so that was the first one. If you're taking notes, number one, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Number two. Okay, the word of God must be the source of your faith. The word of God must be the source of your faith. In Romans 10, 17, we said it earlier. You don't have to uh, go there. But it says, so then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by... Okay, come on, we'll do that again together. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by... The word of God. Amen, amen. The word of God has got to be the source of your faith. Uh, not, not just because pastor said it. No, not just because you heard your know, brother Free said it. Not just because you heard a preacher on TV say it. No, because... Uh, all three of us could fall. We could fall in sin at any time. All right. Your source has got to be the word of God. Word of God. And if you're operating in faith, you have to saturate yourself with that word. I mean, sometimes you're going to have to turn off the Anita Baker. They don't listen to Anita Baker no more, do they? She, she old. Yeah, that's old. What do y'all listen to? What do y'all listen to? Oh, God, I need a bake, huh? oh, right. Ain't nobody gonna hold that because they want nobody want to get busted. Though, so. <laughs> I, this is a smart crowd. This is a smart crowd. It's the A class. Okay. You, sometimes you're just gonna have to, to to turn off the the, the home shopping network. A food channel. Uh oh. Okay. You gotta turn it off. Turn it off. And you know, sometimes you have have to just turn the plate over and, and get into that word. Especially if you're not experiencing any victory for a while. Or some, at least some, showing some progress. You have to saturate yourself with that word. You have to. You got to do that. You know, and, and a lot of times we would settle for, well, I was church Sunday and Wednesday. But well, that's not enough. That, well, some of us may not be enough. Depending on what you're believing for. Okay. So, you, you, but if you come to me and say, what am I doing wrong? First thing I'm going to ask you is, what scripture are you standing on? Yes. Yeah. You know, you know, and, 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 and I've had a couple people tell me, well, you know, God going to do it. Yeah, I know God going to do it. God know he's going to do it. Probably do you know God going to do it? <laughs> where, where he tell you he going to do it at? Well, I heard Pastor Ken preach it up there. Well, Pastor Ken ain't God. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you got to get a scripture on that. You know, and you got to meditate on that scripture. Get it into your heart so it'll produce for you. You got to do that. You got to do that. No, you can't be a lazy Christian. This is a different crowd here today. <laughs> this this morning. You can't be a lazy Christian. You know, the lady, what, what, what pastor call it? Bootleg. Bootleg. You know what a bootleg Christian is? Huh? They, come up, they, they come up to the, the, the pastor or the minister for prayer 
and to teach them the word, and then they leave, they don't want to spend no time in it on themselves. They kind of just bootleg it from him. You know, so if it ain't working, then they go back to the pastor or the minister and say, hey, I need this, you know, pray again, pray again. Now you can't, you, got, you can't be a lazy Christian. Can't be a lazy Christian. Can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. Now, if you have battles and whatnot, it's time to bone up in that word. And you got to get the specific promise that you need for the specific thing that you're believing on, for. If you need healing, you got to get those scriptures on healing. And the reason why, because faith for that promise is found in that promise. Everybody catch that? Faith for that promise is found in that promise. All right, so you got to get that promise. And the more you read that promise, the more faith you get. You know, and then you get the tape on it. Pastor got a tape on it, go get the tape on it. Right. You, know, you got to invest in yourself sometimes. Get the tape on it. Listen to it over and over. All right? Turn KFAT off. You know, sometimes you got you to you take a bold stance. But if you want to operate in faith, you got to get that word on it. You got to get that word on it. Gotta, and, and you just got to hold on to it. Hold on to it. Hold fast to it. I mean, I believe, I mean, we believe in... Still believe for total death freedom, but it was one particular bill where it targeted uh, uh, in, in, in reference to our um, some rental property that it had. And I felt it was an unjust bill, so I didn't want to pay it. And so, you know, I sent down to the, uh, to the county and whatnot, and they're like, no, 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 you owe that money. I called down there and said, no, 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 you're going to have to pay it. What? I, I, I had nothing to do with that. No, 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 your problem, you got to pay it, wasn't it? You know, so I went on through the. the um, the process, believe in God, oh no man, nothing. And I went on through the process and they was like, my property manager went down there and they came and looked out and said, you know what? Yeah, yeah you still owe that money. <laughs> and this went on about two years, a year and a half, almost two years, you know. And just a couple months ago, the bill came in, wiped clean. You know what I'm saying? Wiped clean. You know, because I, held, I, held, I, I never came off of it. Even when I was prepared to write the check, I was still saying, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I owe my old man nothing. You know, and sometimes, that's not, sometimes you got to do You got to get saturated in that word and get that promise on it. Amen? Amen. Okay, everybody say, <sighs> okay. <laughs> You're such an obedient church. <laughs> say the word of God, word of God must, be must be our source. Okay, number three. Number three, are you walking in love? Yes, Lord. Faith worketh by love. Go to uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Faith worketh by love. You know, faith is going to work, it's going to work through love. I mean, that, that's just the bottom line. You got you to you have a, a love for people. Amen. You just got to have it. You just got to have it. Okay, everybody there? If you're there, say, I'm a friend of God. Aha, uh -huh. I thought y'all saw something else, huh? Here we go. It says, for in Christ Jesus, for if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith activated and energized and expressed and working through love. All right. Now, that particular passage of scripture, go ahead and read the whole thing. It talks about our, um, um, our, our uh, fruit and deity that we have, but it says none of that stuff that, that you're, who, you, who you are, your creed, none of that stuff work, none of that stuff matters. One thing that matters, the liberty that we have in Christ is, are we walking in faith through love? Are we walking in love? It's our faith working through love. Okay? So, with that, this is one of the ones that's, that's more subtle than some of the other ones is, we have to be able to operate in love. Right? Amen? Amen. Can you all agree in that? Yes. So, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And let's look at the love chapter. And let's do a little checkup. Okay? Uh-oh. 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 right. <laughs> okay. Let's do a little checkup on ourselves. You know, a couple, couple things that I was doing are wrong that I had to check. You know, and if it happened to Minister Free, I'm sure it may happen. But it probably didn't happen to none of y'all. Oh, y'all. Y'all marvelous. <laughs> so we'll just, just, just keep it pointed at Minister Free here. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 Verse 4 in the Amplified. So I'll look at the screen. If you got the Amplified, cool, follow along. But Amplified kind of blows it up for me. I like to blow things up. Amen? Yeah. Let's look up there. It said, 
Love endures long, and love is patient and kind. Look, 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 look. That's the first check right there. You know, are you patient? And kind with people. Now, sometimes when you operate in the faith, uh, Satan will assign someone to yeah. irritate you to no end. <laughs> Just makes it as if, why is this person here? You know, you want to slap them and cut them off and cuss them out. You know, they, oh, they're, they're pearl makers. Everybody know what a pearl maker is? Who don't know what a pearl maker is? Okay, a pearl, a pearl is made when a, um, a little piece of sand gets inside of a clam. And it irritates that clam so much that it spins this thing over it to smooth it out. And then the result of it is the pearl. Huh? Okay. Y'all didn't know that, did y'all? So y'all learned a little bit something from it. And so <laughs> some people are sent to irritate you so they could turn that little irritation something that's worthless into something that's valuable. It's priceless. So you need that, that pearl maker in your life. And you have to be patient and kind with them. Okay? You got to be kind with them. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And then after a while, the irritation doesn't even, it's not even there anymore. You, you see them coming with their drama. He's like, okay, here they come. Okay. He just smiles. No, baby, we can't do that. I'm sorry. I love you, though. Praise the Lord. You got no, you know. Where before you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> now you know, don't even bother you anymore, okay? So where do we stop? Well, love is patient and kind. All right, oh, here we go. Here we go. Ne ne next check. Love never is envious or nor boils over with jealousy. Okay, haters. Everybody say haters. haters. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You can't be a hater and expect your faith to produce. You can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. Now I'll explain it too because a lot of people don't know the difference. Jealousy is when I'm hating on you because you have something that I wanted. So now I'm jealous. Okay, envy is when I'm hating on you because you have something, not that I want it, I just didn't want you to have it. Okay? All right. You can't expect to operate in faith if you're a hater. You can't. Your faith won't produce. Even if it's secret in your heart. Oh, that's right. Even if you're still smiling in your face. God knows what's in your heart. He knows what's in your heart. And every time you drive by, you feel that. Huh? God knows what it is. It's envy or jealousy. And, and it... it Poisons the atmosphere for your faith. And the healing never goes away. I mean, the, uh, the, the sickness never goes away. All right, I'm talking to somebody in here. I'm talking to somebody. Listen up. Okay, let's move on. What's the next check? Oh, it's not boastful, vainglorious, does not display itself haughty, according to number five. And it's not conceited, arrogant, or inflated with pride. Okay? Okay? If you're operating in pride, it's an atmosphere that your faith can't produce in. And the reason why is because God resists the proud. Right. Are you trying to believe God for something and he resists you with it? That don't even sound right. <laughs> that, don't even, that can't be right. He, you, you believe in God for healing and he turned around and resisting your healing from coming because of your stupid pride. That's right, brother. Now, pride usually is manifested in this. It's not, it's not so much of, I think I'm all that. Because you should think you're all that. Your father sits on the throne if you're born again. It's, it's more manifested when I, I think I'm better than you. Or better than this one. Or I can do more with that. Or than they can. You know, that's pride. That stinks. That stinks. Can't operate in pride. And then God becomes your biggest resistance. So you humble yourself. And then he becomes your, your greatest ally. You know, I, I prefer people before me. Okay. Let's go to the next one. 
That's beautiful. That's a good check right there. Good check. Okay. Love is not rude, unmannerly, nor does it act unbecomingly. Oh, stop right there. Okay. All right. Because you cannot act like a monkey and expect your faith to produce. <laughs> you can't do it. You can't act ugly. You can't act ugly. Turn your neighbor and say, you got their neighbor's name, right? Yeah. Tell them by the name and say, you can't act ugly. Yeah. You can't act ugly. God, God don't like ugly. <laughs> huh? Huh? Turn to the other neighbor. Did you get the other neighbor's name? Get them by name and say, John, you cannot act ugly. <laughs> you can't do it, though. You can't do it. Because that's not love. It's not love. That's not love. All right, and that's and faith working by love. You acting like a monkey. You, you can't. And and think about it. A lot of people produce stuff in their flesh, and they act ugly. But they produce stuff in their flesh, and they call it faith. And really, it's just the Ishmael. You know, they didn't produce it in flesh. Look what the Lord done did. Man, come on, player. I mean, come on. Just got out the zoo. Come on. What's the next one here? God, all right. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own, its own rights, or its own way. For it is not self-seeking. Okay? The, how did I say it earlier? The anthem of your heart cannot be, it's all about me. Can't be, it's all about me. Okay? The banner of our heart is supposed to be we're blessed to be a blessing. Amen. God first, others second, and me last. Okay? And that's whether you're in faith or not. God first, others second, and me last. All right? All right, what you make happen for another man, God will make happen for you. I'm, I'm, here, to, I'm here to feel somebody else's dream. The God's the keeper of my dream. All right? And so it just has to be that way. And if you, because if you become self-seeking and, and you're so full of self, then you start using people to get things. You know, you smile up in, in the brother's face because, you know, you see he got, he rolling. With, and, you say, and then you get next to him, oh, Lord, let my rent get paid. <laughs> God first, other second. Before you even ask God, just go out and help somebody else with their rent. That's right. And then God said, I'll take care of you. And that's the way we live. That's where we live. That's how we have to live. That's how we live. Because it's not, it's not in love. God loves people. Oh, my God. Pastor was talking about that last week, the love of God. God loves people. I mean, he loves him some you. The Bible says his, he's mindful of you. That means his mind is full of you. Yeah. He's thinking about you all the time. I said, God, you're thinking that much about me. Ain't no need for me to think about me. Then. <laughs> okay, so you love people. You put people first. You know, I, I, and with that reason, you know those that are, they try to manipulate. I'm not talking about... I'm not talking about being a, a doormat or anything like that. But I'm talking about, okay, look, you know, I see this brother has a need here. Okay? Let me, let me do a, and I'll run him through the faith checklist, you know. Hey, look, okay, this is where you're going wrong. But anyway, so you cannot be self-seeking. And the thing about it, we're going to get to that a little bit. I know sometimes, when, especially when there's lack, or especially when there's, when there's been pain, it's been going on for so long. But still, you got to put God first. And if you can, can learn to give out of your pain, then one day you'll be reigning in your pain. Yeah. And after a while, it won't be no pain. It'll just be rain. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let me move on. I don't want to get caught up in that. Oh, my God, that ain't right, is it? It sure is. Okay, let's keep moving. Where, where did we stop? Doesn't see the way. It's not self -seeking. Okay, it's not touchy. I'm not even gonna touch that. <laughs> this morning I touched it this morning, and I was like, "Where'd that come from?" Right, but you, 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 you shouldn't be touchy. Okay, shouldn't be touchy. Shouldn't be so 
sensitive, okay? Okay, what time of the month it is? All right. Uh, oh, I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young and immature you are. So that covers everybody? Did I cover everybody? Uh-oh. I will hear about that later. Let's keep going. <laughs> it's not fretful or resentful. It doesn't hold account. In other words, love forgives. Love forgives. You, 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 you just going to have to keep your heart clean. And then I know some people have done some, some vile and crazy stuff to us. But you got to let it go. You got to let it go. Yeah. And I know it happened years ago, but it seemed like it just happened yesterday. You still got to let it go. You know, and, and if you can't let it go in your own power, you can let it go by faith. But you got to let it go. You got to let it go. Got to let it go. Love forgives. God, Jesus loved you enough to forgive you of your sin. And you're going to hold it. You were bound for hell. Okay? And he said, ah, I forgive you. I can take care of all of that. You got to let it go. Amen? Amen? Okay, let's move on. Okay. Uh, okay, number three. You must be content. Let's go to Philippians. That's number, that's number four? Oh, come on, what was number one? Uh-huh, number two? Okay, number three? Okay, number four. Isn't that what I said? You must be content. <laughs> you must be content. You must have an inner peace. Let's go to uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. And then if you get Hebrews 13, 5 ready for me, both in the Amplified. Philippians 4, 11, right there on the screen. Not that I am implying that I was in any personal want. For I have learned how to be content, satisfied, to the point where I am not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state that I'm in. Okay, Paul said, no matter what state I'm in, I've learned to be content. And that word content, RQ, means uh, um, um, at peace on the inside without any change from external, uh, on the external. Okay, got to be at peace. Got to be, got to be content. Got to be content. And this is why. This contentment disrupts your peace and produces an internal atmosphere that's poisonous to faith. It's a heart thing. Heart. You got to be content with the things that you have. Let's go to Hebrews 13, 5 now and amplify. Have to be content. Have to be content. There you go. It said, let your character or moral disposition be free from love of money, including greed, avarice, lust, and craving for earthly possessions. Craving for the new house, the bigger house. Craving for the new car. Cravings for the, 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 the six inch stilettos. <laughs> Craving from the, the tailor made suits or the, the bling bling and the jewelry. Your heart got to be free from that. You got to be free from that. Okay? And the reason why, uh, oh, I'm sorry, and to be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. Okay? Be satisfied with the hoopty. And that's your hoopty. That's yours. Okay. Be satisfied with that one black shiny suit you got. Now that's your suit. Your father gave you that. Be satisfied with it. No, be satisfied with, with, with the shoes, with the, 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 the fake Rolex or whatever it is. It's yours. You see what I'm saying? So be satisfied. And wear it proudly. Because you? you have to be content. All right? And the reason why, because this contentment, it tells God that you don't appreciate the stuff that he's given you. I used it this morning. The children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, they were going through the wilderness. There was a spill where they didn't have water. And so they started complaining. I think it was Exodus chapter, I want to say Eight and six. I shouldn't have said that. But anyway, it's in Exodus. Go back and look it up. And so they were complaining. And, and, and Moses said, you're not complaining against me. You're complaining against the Lord. 
All right, and I got to put the balance in there. When they didn't have water, and, and, and the men there with their children, their little children crying, screaming, Daddy, I'm thirsty. I ain't had nothing to eat. I ain't had no water. I'm thirsty. And it's hot out here. I know the cloud there, but I'm still hot and thirsty. All the dust all over me. Look at me. And so after a while, the man like, you know, Moses do cause us to come in here like this. And so they complain to Moses. Totally forgetting that in Egypt, they were killing their kids. Yeah. Raping their women. Not allowing them to have any wealth. And so when God was bringing them through the process, they got dissatisfied. Did not appreciate the ten miracles it took to bring them out. And so I know where you are right now. It may, you may, especially some of us that are in lack right now and, or, or don't have the things that we've been believing a long time for. I know what it feels like. The, the, those men in, in, in the desert, they knew what it felt like. But don't look at the lack. Look at what God has already done. And appreciate that. The voice of appreciation, uh, uh, appreciation is thankfulness. Gratitude. The voice of gratitude is thankfulness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know what? I woke up this morning. I turned my hot water valve on in my shower. And you know what came out? Hot water. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Inside the house. Thank you, Lord. Y'all know what that means until you ain't got no hot water in the house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I mean, you got to be appreciative of those things. That's your hoopty. Clean it up. Wash it. That's your car. Your father gave it to you. Your suit. Clean it out. You got to be appreciative of the things God has. Now, what I found, a big origin of discontentment is comparison. That's so true. You know, and we try to keep up with these people named the Joneses. <laughs> you know, they got a new car. How come I can't have a new car, Lord? They got a big house. How come I can't have a big house? She got healed. How come I, I'm still dealing with the, you know? trying to keep up with the Jones. And what I find out is that most of the time the Jones is on credit anyway. They're sinking in debt and whatnot. But if they're blessed or not, though, it doesn't matter. You be content with such things as you have. Got to be content. Got to be content. Say, I will be satisfied. I will be satisfied. Amen. Amen. Okay. And the last one, which number is this? Okay, what was number one? Number two, number three, number four, okay, number five. Thank you. <laughs> you must spend time in prayer. If you're going to be a faith man or a faith woman, you have to spend time in prayer. There's no way around it. You got to, and the thing about it, in prayer is where the Holy Spirit anoints your faith. Your faith has to be anointed. Because, you know, your faith will dry up. It could be just as dry as a rock. Not produce anything. Like we read earlier, have no fruit. But it's the Holy Spirit in prayer and the Word of God that, that keeps that place soft and subtle. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, um, you don't have to go to it now. I mean, you guys look it up. Write it down. Look it up. In Ephesians 6.16, 6, um, Paul gives us an analogy of the Christian uh, soldier by giving, a, by giving us an analogy of the Roman soldier's yeah. armor. Okay? And in 6.16, 6, he said, above all, take the shield of faith yeah. where, wherewith you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts yeah. of the wicked. That's Ephesians 6.16. 6, okay. So we can look at Paul's analogy on faith on the sh of the Roman soldiers to extract some principles of faith. Okay. So that Roman soldier, the, the shield that he was talking about was the, the scotum, which is the, the, the square shield. It was, it was, it was, 
I think it was 42 inches by 48 inches and it was curved. It had an iron framework so the enemy couldn't come and crush it or punch through it. And then it was layered with lamb skin, layers and layers and layers of lamb skin. Okay? And he said that will quench the fiery darts. Now we know the fiery darts are indicative of the thoughts that the enemy puts in our mind. All right. And there's basically three thoughts or three levels of, of, of warfare that he attacks us with these arrows. Uh, the regular arrow, which the, the non-flaming arrow, is the arrow when he shoots at us and it causes us to doubt. Okay. The, the other arrow is an arrow that's dipped inside of tar and is shot and it was designed to set things on fire. Okay. And when it hit the, the Roman soldiers shield. It's, it's indicative of us being distracted and discontented. All right? And then the, the last um, um, arrow was an arrow that was stuffed with some flammable material. And when it's shot, it hits the Roman soldier's shield and it explodes. All right? And it totally takes them out. And usually those are the, 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 the lustful or the, the if lust is your issue, the anger, the things that consume us. Yeah. Now, like when I was a, an alcoholic, I would get consumed by alcohol to the point where even though I said I wasn't going to drink again, eight hours later I was back at the bottom. That's all I could think about. You know. So some people, is anger. They said I'm not going to get angry, I'm not going to get angry, and they you know they're cussing somebody out. Because they get consumed, that dark. Like come by and do, you know, sexual sins. Some of some people say, "Well, I'm not gonna sleep with him no more." And two o'clock, and you know who it is on the phone. <laughs> Answer it anyway, cause you're at home just consumed. Right, that's the fiery dog we're talking about there. Yeah. So what would have to happen was the shield of faith would quench that. Now the Roman soldier, in order for his shield to be effective, cause if he didn't do what I'm finna tell you to do with your faith, his shield, it would get burnt up. Cause remember, it was lambskin. And lambskin would dry out. All right? So what he would have to do, he would have to rub that shield down periodically with uh, olive oil. Isn't that something? That olive oil, that just, that's the Holy Spirit right there. We have to rub our faith down with it. Huh? And then before they went in battle, when they get, especially when they, they know they're going to battle, battle the sea, they would take that shield and soak it in the water. Okay? And that represents us soaking ourselves in the water of the word. Yeah. With the washing of the word. Yeah. All right. And so then they'll be able to go, and then when those fiery darts come, especially ones that consume us, our faith will be able to last while we get it together. You get that anointing with the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that will say, okay, okay, okay. He, 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 he corrects us when we're wrong. You know, to keep our faith fresh, to keep it subtle, okay? You know, you got to go back and apologize. You know that, right? Yeah. Oh, Lord, okay. Yeah. Holy Spirit does that. When we, in prayer, just the other day I was in prayer. I was like, Lord, I can't do this. I can't come. And he said, you know what? That's because he's trying to do it in the flesh. I'm supposed to be doing that. Lift grief right off of me, or burden right off of me. Holy Spirit does it in prayer. You know, sometimes sometimes things just hit you so hard, yeah. and you like Lord, and the Holy Spirit be right there to minister. The Holy Spirit anoints our faith. So if you're going to be a faith man, you got to be a man of prayer. If you're going to be a faith woman, you got to be a woman of prayer. So you give the old, the Holy Spirit opportunity to keep your faith fresh and alive. After Sometimes some people have been believing for 10 years. Of course that thing would dry up if the Holy Spirit wasn't there. But when he's there, he anointed. Keep it alive. Then when it comes, we're like, hey, that's just what we've been believing for. All right? The cancer's gone now. Don't have to look at that anymore. All right? The rent got paid. Doesn't matter. We got it. Now I can move into the house now. Or hit the keys to the new car. It doesn't matter what it is. Life will hit you so hard sometimes they will try to drain you of your faith. And the Holy Spirit keeps it fresh. Amen? Amen. Yeah.
Y'all agree with that? Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. Y'all get blessed this morning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah.